Okay, as promised, um, theoretical aspects of ethics. Um, to begin with, I suppose, um, a question uh, which is not terribly important but leads to uh, some important concepts, and that is, is there a difference between morality and ethics, uh, or morals and ethics? Um, and uh, there are many people who would make that distinction, and some of them would say that um, ethics are uh, sort of the theoretical side, and morals is what you do, and then there are other people who would say that yes, there is an important distinction, and morals is the standards, and ethics is what you do. So, no, there isn't any agreement on that. And basically, if you, uh, you know, if you look it up in the dictionary, uh, you are going to find that there really isn't any significant difference there. Uh, and any uh, philosophy textbooks uh, that say that there is, well, I would probably take it with a grain of salt. Um, at any rate, you know, that is, I think, very unlikely to be a question that anybody will have gotten through uh, the exam committee, so you won't be faced with it. And um, in addition, uh, uh, well, it, it does bring up, as I say, an important concept, and this does turn on our theories of uh, ethics, and that is the major division in, in terms of theories of ex ethics is between um, deontological and teleological ethics. Uh, big words, you're not likely to have used them. Deontological ethics and ethical theories, and there are many, uh, see ethics in terms of duty. There are certain things that you do. Um, this is, in fact, the uh, original Latin definition of the word that gives us religion. Um, and so, you know, people who understand religion in terms of the Ten Commandments or the Jewish Torah, um, uh, the commands that they list out of the uh, Quran, uh, and so on and so forth, that is uh, deontological ethics. You have certain duties. Uh, you have a, a duty as a human being. You have a duty, as I say, in terms of being a professional. Um, there are certain duties. You have duties as a parent, as a child, to the parent, um, uh, so on and so forth. Um, all of these, uh, though, turn on the idea of it's, it's a duty. There is a there is a standard. It is what you do. It is how you behave. Um, so that is deontological ethics. And therefore, um, to a very large extent, the professional codes of conduct, I mean, it's right there in the name, codes of conduct, how you conduct yourself, how you behave. Uh, these are part of the ethics of duty. These are deontological. And then there is te uh, teleological. Um, this is the, the more abstract, the, uh, the idea of, you know, what does this particular action do towards a certain end? What is, um, the end result of what we are going to do, rather than specific yes or no, do this, don't do that. Um, so we have um, 
things like uh, utilitarianism, um, the greatest good for the greatest number. Um, so, decide on an individual basis in a given situation uh, what action you take now will result in the greatest good for the greatest number. Um, there, uh, some people would make a distinction, for example, between um, Old Testament Christianity, Ten Commandments, deontological, and New Testament Christianity with uh, Jesus saying, you know, the greatest commandment is to love God, and the second is to love your neighbor. And uh, I believe it was uh, Augustine who, from there, sort of basically boiled it down to love God and do what you please. Um, the end result being, you know, do what God is most pleased with, what will will most pr please God in this situation. So again, teleological, what is the end? Um, so, uh, these are the, the, the two major divisions. Uh, the duty uh, and the the end result types of theories in, in terms of ethics. Um, as I say, uh, probably in terms of the exam, you are going to be looking at uh, professional codes of ethics, codes of conduct, therefore deontological. Uh, but um, modern day ethics do tend to look more at uh, the teleological, the end result. Um, you know, how is, how is this particular action going to end up? Um, and so that is uh, where modern discussions go. So uh, again, depending on how questions go through the exam committee process these days, you may see uh, these things. And, and the, uh, the trolley problem, for example. Uh, you know, do you, you know, you've, you're running a trolley uh, down the track, you see, you know, one person uh, tied up on the track, uh, and if you switch to the siding, you will go through five people tied up on the track. So which do you do? And, you know, then people add all kinds of conditions on it and so on and so forth. And uh, the real answer is to think outside the box and slam on the brakes. But um, the, you know, they, they, again, you know, it's something to think about. It's interesting, though, to note, um, as I mentioned, you know, it's kind of embarrassing here. Um, you know, can we write questions that, that determine what somebody's ethical standard actually is? You know, it's fairly easy to see in things like the trolley problem, you know, which is the right answer in any given situation. But, um, do we, well, a, a, according to research, it's very interesting to see that even raising the topic of ethics, just asking people to consider ethical standards, the ethical uh, result of uh, a, you know, taking an action or not, um, actually makes them, ends up with them making better decisions. It's, it's quite interesting to look at the research on this. So, uh, anyways, we shall continue with other uh, more tangible bits of ethics in the next clips.